And now let's proceed to our final lecture this day from Zbigniew Piecuch. Piecuch, uh, 12 years of experience in software development. Since 77 uh, years, he is very much interested in agile, uh, agile methodologies, particularly in teams' health and teams' performance. He is an acting Scrum Master for one team, and for another, he's an acting Kanban Master. Uh, privately, he's a huge TV series addict. Uh, one of his achievements, for example, is watching uh, 10 seasons of Friends seven times, which I've counted. This gives us a total amount of 1,666 episodes of Friends. Uh, but today, however, he will give us a presentation on uh, boosting the knowledge sharing based on the um, case study from this company, Datalink. Uh, please give a warm welcome to Zbigniew Piecuch. Hello, uh, I, yeah, you can hear me. Uh, thank you very much for coming to this talk. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, boosting knowledge, sharing something that was uh, of interest to me in my current company. Uh, the goal for this talk was, I was hoping actually to make like, hoping for 50% of people here not sleeping at the end of the talk, but we have l like 5 p.m. already, so let's be realistic, let's, make it 20%, including me. Okay, so uh, let's start. A uh, little bit of information before we go to the real subject. So my entire career, I've, wor I've been working with uh, long living products, products that are ma on the market for 10 or even 20 years. So what I'm talking uh, here for sure applies for those kind of products. Perhaps this also applies to products that I have shorter life cycle, but to be honest, I'm not uh, really sure. Uh, I'll st uh, next link. And please keep in mind that whatever I present here is something that I know right now and I believe right now is true. I may change my mind and just in case you would be interested when I change my mind, you can always go to www. What does Bishak think today? And for only tens of water a month, subscribe and I will send you a letter, email, every time I change my mind. So if you're interested, you may try. Okay, so now uh, let's go to the subject. Why this kind of subject? Uh, the reason is quite simple. Just because uh, business grows, and because business grows, the amount of information that is required to work on a product also increases. There are a lot of new stuff added you need to do something with the product so that the, your customers are all the time interested. You've got input from customers, you add some new feature, you remove some old features, so the information amount changes and generally all the time increases. Also, if the product grows, it's very likely that the number of people working on the product is also increasing. So you've got more and more engineers working on the product, you need to hire more and more engineers. And actually, in my current work from the very beginning when I got hired there we were all the time uh, hiring new people and the pace of hiring new engineers is only growing. Okay but with both of this there can be another effect that the knowledge is actually being scattered among all the people we have and this create, may create some problems and I'll be talking right now how to minimize those problems. While working on, the project, pro on this uh, problem, I found the term time to productivity. I didn't know such a thing like this previously exists. Probably all of us know mean time to failure. There is something like this. Time to productivity is not so well known. Its definition is like this. The time required to get the employee to a point where they have the skills, knowledge, and qualifications to operate on a level similar to other employees at the company. In shorter time, uh, in shorter, I would say it's the time after which employee is spending more time actually working, developing the product than just getting still familiar, familiarized with the product. And let's be honest with ourselves, people are learning all the time so that this will never end. People will all the time learning something new, will spend some time on uh, uh, getting knowledge and that's very good. But there is some point at which when people get some problem to work on, some new feature to implement, some bug to fix, they will have in mind already some idea how to do it instead of a lot of question, where should I actually even start to search how to implement it. 
Uh, okay, so time to productivity. Is, is, is it possible to reduce it? So let's just imagine I've come here and tell you, no, thanks, bye. <laughs> so probably there, is, there are some possibilities. And the first one I can think of is to hire the right people. And I can't imagine uh, companies are not doing it. So this is probably something that we are all doing. We are searching for people that have already some proper background, know languages, have good software craftsmanship, uh, no solutions on, on the market and so on. We are not hiring just anyone. Oh, okay, you've heard about C++, join us. So we are always searching f uh, the right people for the right people. And the other stuff we could do is to share the knowledge properly with all the new people that join our company so that this way the time to productivity also decreases. Okay, how to represent knowledge? And here will be a little bit question. I know here are people that know the answer to the question, so maybe give a chance to someone that haven't seen it yet. Well, okay, that's a different slide. Re rewind. Okay, how to represent the knowledge? Before we, before we start talking about knowledge, I was thinking there's a term that image can be substitute thousand words. And I was trying to figure, find an image that could show, represent visually what the knowledge actually is. And I didn't find any. But I found an animation, movie, whatever you call it, that could represent it. And in my mind, the knowledge is something like this. Like bubble that constantly changes the shape. In some places it grows, in some places uh, it gets smaller. It represents like adding new features, removing some obsolete features. But this bubble, what is not unfortunately visible on this animation, the bubble has all the time the tendency to grow. So it constantly changes and it grows. And this is how I have visually the knowledge represent the, uh, the knowledge needed for the product in my mind. Okay, so why share knowledge properly? And here is the image that I was talking about. So those persons that know the answer maybe can give a chance to those that do not know, know the answer. My question is, uh, this is a picture of some system. And from this picture, I've removed most of it. I've left small piece I don't remember exactly five, six percent of the image. And it is very precise, very detailed. Could you tell me what is on the image? What is on this picture? Sorry again? I don't know how you did it, but yeah. Okay, so here's the same picture. On the second one, you can also see like five, six percent of the image because it's shaded this way. But if you look at both of this image, which one gives you a better overview of the entire system? And now imagine you've got a new colleague in your company. You've got some amount of time that you are spending with that person trying to explain uh, your solution, your product to that person. And during those several, I don't know, hours or days, you can either describe a small piece of your solution very precisely, very detailedly, or you can describe the entire solution, but not with so much details. And then that person goes to a desk and has to get some task to work on. Some, I don't know, feature bug, whatever. And if the feature, if you gave this detailed information, the feature or bug, is, or bug is in this area, you're a lucky one, that's a very good situation, but it very rarely, ha very rarely happens. And if you go give this kind of image to that person, that person will be able to start immediately thinking in which area the problem could be or the solution should be implemented. Of course, the, it will need to dig further, search for more information to with people, but it, it has already overview of the solution and can jump immediately to the place where it should be. This is the original picture of the bicycle that I used for this example. Okay. Can it be harmful? In, I mean, can it be harmful if you give the knowledge in different order than in different order than it should be given? Generally, you could say no, because how can information be harmful? You've got the information now, or you got it in a week, or you got it in one order or in a different one. It shouldn't make any difference. But just like. I, Example from my life, 
When I was young, I got my first electronic keyboard, some notes, started to learn, play it by myself. So I took the notes, mapped the notes to those keys, started playing. After some time, I was able to play the song, next one, and so on. I've learned some of them, then I stopped playing. Then a few years back, I've decided maybe I should get back to this hobby and take a proper training for this. So I went for a proper training, started go there. First day was great because I could play it. Then a little bit more complicated notes started and it turn out, turns out that my fingers are moving in a totally strange way. A way that they shouldn't be moving. A way that I've learned some years ago and this way works only for like songs that I know or songs that are slow. And I'm not able to play po properly some little bit more complicated notes. And the, uh, the conclusion of this is that it is really easy to learn something. It is for the brain to acquire information is quite, quite easy. But if the information will be slightly incorrect or will give you uh, incorrect view of the system, it is not easy to remove this information from your head. It's easy to get something in, it's not that easy to get it out. A uh, visual example of this, if ca it can be harmful, would be from one movie probably we all liked, is that Anakin keeps, I don't remember the other guy's name, on the edge of his, his sabers and Yoda says, kill him, so he kill him. But then the next information comes right away. You must not. Whoops. So information just given in different order and no possibility to revert the effect. Okay. So what's the approach? So I was thinking how to attack the problem and the idea that I found out and that came to my mouth is, was relatively simple. It was just simply to use abstraction layers. As one of the programming books, if I remember correctly, it was about metaprogramming in C++ says, every problem can be, can be solved by adding additional layer of abstraction. Almost every, because the only problem you cannot solve is, is the too big amount of layers in your solution. But every uh, problem could be solved this way. Uh, abstract thinking and abstractions are really great stuff that people somehow develop, not sure how. There's a nice TED talk on YouTube by James Flynn in which he uh, reasons how it actually happens that at some point, if I remember correctly, it was the beginning of uh, 20th century, the overall IQ or the um, IQ level of humanity got uh, quite rapidly high. And uh, according to him, the reason was that people learned to think in abstract way. People learned to discuss and reason about abstract situation objects that actually do not exist. So abstraction layers is the way we would like to follow. And probably now if you hear layers or abstraction layers, you can imagine some kind of layers that you would have. But to be honest, for the purpose of knowledge sharing, much better view of layers would be rather this one, abstraction layer triangle. Because uh, this shape better uh, represent the knowledge that should be put on each of the layer. So on the highest layer, the top one, it's uh, the smallest one and it's actually the highest abstraction layer of your product that contains the smallest amount of information. Then with every next layer, uh, it's wider in this triangle and it contains more information. Then having such abstraction layers triangle, if you uh, explain it, uh, the information going from the top to the bottom, you all the time give the new, mm, your colleagues information about the entire system, but you do, you do not provide a lot of information at once. You do not overwhelm or uh, yeah, do not provide too many information at once to the new person. You give the very top abstract layer that is really easy for a person to uh, get familiar or to remember, 
Then based on this, you give the next layer, with, which again describes the entire solution, but with more details. Then next layer with again more details. And this way the view of the product, of the solution of the product is building in, uh, in head. Uh, okay, so how to build it? That's a very good question and there is no simple answer because that triangle, abstraction layer triangle, totally depends on the solution that you have in your company. And there is no like one rule you could say, uh, you can do it this way, this way. There are some guidance that I would like to give and one of them is that every layer should be complete. So like every of this layer should describe the entire system that you are uh, explaining. So it's not like only on the top one you explain everything very briefly and on the next one you took one part of, of your solution, explain only this part. Because this can create problems. Next uh, guidance is that no layer should contradict the information that are on the previous layer. So if you have something uh, described on layer, or second layer, for example, and you have third layer, information on the third layer should be like additions or more deeper information to that, uh, to the information that are on the second layer. But they may not contradict the, the information that on the layer above because this is a problem. That this means that either the diagram is not complete or there is no actually understanding of the solution or there is just simply some problem with the solution itself. Okay, so maybe example how to build such a triangle of abstraction layers. And please do not be surprised that this example will be based on something that we work, that we have in our company on our product because that's something that is really close to me, that's something what, at least I think, I know, and that's why I can talk about this. And possibly you could try to think about some abstract example that doesn't exist, but let's use real one. So what should be the first very top layer for the solution we have in our, our company? And the only information actually that you need to give is that if you have our product, the only thing you need to do, just plug the USB and it starts working. And this is actually the amount of information, for example, my parents need. They don't need anything more. You've got a desk, you've got additional monitors, hard drive, keyboard, mouse, whatever you like connected to the universal, uh, universal docking station. And when you come to the desk, you only connect the USB cable, all the monitors light up, everything starts to work. There's seriously nothing more, the highest level of abstraction. Okay, so what could be on the next layer? On second layer could be information, for example, my brother that works in IT could be interested. So, okay, you plug the USB and it start working. So there has to be something, so there is, there is driver. And this is a screenshot of a uh, driver installer for Windows of our product. And this is the next layer of information that you need to have the driver in the system, you need to install it. And my brother from IT will be interested how it works, how to install it, what he needs to know. But that's still quite not big amount of information and allows you to understand what's there, what's below. Uh, okay, what could be the next uh, layer, layer third, third layer? So as I already mentioned on the, by talking on the first layer, there is, uh, there are additional monitors, for example, in your desk that light up when you uh, plug in the dock. So the next layer inform of information could be, for example, how it actually work, a block diagram a little bit better. So here you've got, you for sure need to get the frames, picture, uh, pixels from system. You need to, we process them, we pack them so that it's possible to send it via USB. 
you send it to your, via USB to the device. The device needs to unpack it from all the USB packages and so on. Process it again and just send it to the monitor or multiple monitors if you have more of them. From this already, it's possible also to note the split, the division, that the higher part of this is something that's hap that is happening on the computer, on the host. The lower part is something that is happening in the device. And I don't know, if I did it correctly, five minutes ago, you have no idea what we are doing in our company. Right now, you should be more or less know what company that I work for is doing and really totally high level overview of how it works, what, what, are, what are its capabilities. This abstraction layer triangle is not actually the one that we use in our company to explain something because there are more information like if there's driver, how it is installed, where the files are put and so on. And there, those are information that we provide to our colleagues. But uh, well, this would be too much information right now for the need of this uh, discussion. But you can get uh, the imagination how this, uh, how this should work. Uh, okay, so from the other hand, from the other direction maybe, let's try to think what should be on the very last layer in such triangle of abstraction layers. Any guess? Yeah. Uh, so this actually I would say a little bit not on the lowest layer, but on the very bottom there's just simply, in my opinion, source code. Something that is counted, I don't know how your solution looks like, in hundreds of thousands or millions of lines of source code, something that is actually, uh, you wouldn't sit and start explaining someone your source code because it makes no sense, there is too much of it. A little bit more, one la level higher, la one layer higher, that there could be, for example, design patterns. Something that we also know, we may use them in various places, but there's like only one level of abstraction above the source code. Okay, so uh, what, is the pro what are such properties of the layers of abstraction layers triangle? Having this triangle has a few uh, interesting op uh, properties. And the one that was already mentioned a little bit is the amount of information. The higher you are on this uh, triangle, the less information actually there is. And the lower you are, the more information there is. But if you would uh, have your solution split it into such layers and you split it from the top, you would explain it only in to, into a certain level because it would take too much time to explain entire code or all the design patterns you use in which places. But there's the second uh, property that is also quite important. I call it variability, I'm not sure if it's the correct name. And it's just simply, the higher you are on the abstraction layer, the less frequent any changes on the, this layer actually happen. And the lower you are, the more frequent the changes are actually happening. So if you combine those two and you go from the top, it makes the biggest sense to explain the highest level more precisely because those are information that will not change. In our component, for example, the highest level abstraction, just the USB plug-in, it didn't change since the very beginning, since the first product was launched, as far as I know. And from the bottom of this uh, pyramid, you've got source code, which is a lot of I information, a lot of lines, a lot of places, and you could start explaining it, but probably before you finish explaining it to someone, it's already changed. If you're developing, it probably happens to you many times when you fix something, wanted to commit or push to server and there's much merge conflict because someone else changed something in the same area. The bottom of the abstraction layer triangle changes very often. That's why uh, explain, <laughs> explaining it makes, yeah, actually no, makes no sense, just simply. The top doesn't change too often, so it makes sense to explain it. During the previous talk, uh, it was said that to share knowledge properly, it's best to have the information written somewhere. And I could agree with this, but having the written information also makes sense 
for the higher levels. And the lower you are, the less sense it makes to describe everything on paper because it changes so frequently that you would need to change it all the time. This is probably also why in the software craftsmanship, a proper naming of function class and so on is so important because you don't create an additional documentation unless that's like very complex algorithm you want to, you want to describe. You don't write the documentation about the source code. The source code should be source documented, um, self-documented because it's changing so often it doesn't just simply make sense to keep additional documentation. Uh, okay. Uh, so when I prepare this in my company, I prepared this abstraction layer triangle in my company and was waiting for new colleagues to be hired so that I will be able to try it how, it, how it actually works in practice. And not so long later, we finally uh, hired a new colleague. So we scheduled meetings. I went to the meeting and we started talking and it goes as it's described from the top to the bottom. And the first layer was really smoothly. The next layer, the driver part also went quite good. Then we reached the third layer where the pixel path was, uh, path was explained. And actually it was not like training, it rather looked like a discussion between, uh, between us. And the question was, but how do you get the pixel from the system? Graphic cards had two outputs, you connect eight, you connect eight monitors. It's like against the design. So I knew the answer. I know the answer how we do it. So I started explaining. It was interested, interesting for him. It was interesting for me. I could give answer to a good question. So the discussion was started rolling and I was explaining how it is, how it is done. And this is really like one of the juicy part in the solution of our product. So it was really a nice discussion. But after some times I realized that with the entire, my approach I wanted to do, I actually failed because I started explaining this. This is, uh, Windows Display Driver model taken from MSDN web page. And we actually jumped into such details like architecture of WDDM. And I've realized that the thing that I'm actually explaining at the moment is not the overall picture, but there's this little small part. So you could say that my first trial with uh, trying to follow this triangle kind of failed. But after some time, we've hired next colleague and it was better and better. And I remember to stay focused, to be on track and not allow to, you know, uh, be tempted to jump from layer, second layer to fourth layer or something like this. Okay. Abstraction layers uh, versus architecture. Uh, one could ask, so what is actually the difference between those two? And what I think is you can see written. It's very possible that your system architecture will be actually one of the layers in the abstraction layer triangle, or maybe few adjacent layers, if you combine them, would be your actual architecture. But so why not use just simply the architecture? Because probably you have or you had architects in your company, very wise people that are working on the architecture and they are working on the architecture because the architecture is more very often complex. If the architecture is not complex, then well, maybe this approach is totally not needed. But if the architecture is complex and you hire a new colleague, he just joined the company and you try to give all the information, show the architecture, it just could be overwhelming. It could be too much at once. And if you use this triangle and go layer by layer, you finally get to the architecture, but that person will be, um, will be ready, will be prepared for those information. will have already some higher level image of your solution. I'm sorry, okay. Um, mental models. Uh, mental models were mentioned today at the first talk uh, I think it was called, is your agile agile or something like this. There was something about mental models. It's a little bit similar here, but maybe I'll start with an example that 
there was a hospital for small babies, infants. In this hospital, there was a baby infant in the incubator and nurse was going near the incubator, just looked and she thought there's something wrong. So she called the other nurse that was actually responsible for that particular baby and talked with her and it turned out that that baby had uh, was it uh, was eating, had no problem with eating, was not crying, had all the results of blood pressure, of uh, previous uh, blood checkings in cor correct. So it looks like there was no problem. But still the nurse thought there is something wrong. So she looked closely at the baby and she found out there was a little rash on the skin. Uh, on the place where the blood was taken from the baby, it looked like there was a little bit too much of blood. The baby maybe looked a little bit pale and she made a decision, went to a doctor and said, this baby need to have uh, antibiotics immediately. There was like n no actual reason to do it. Just the, the nurse went to a doctor and said, this baby need this, those antibiotics. So after a brief discussion, doctor agree. They gave the baby the antibiotics and took blood just to make another measure, mm, yeah, measurements of the blood. And it turns out that the baby had the beginnings of, here's a nice word, um, I forgot the word. Uh, that's a sickness that uh, you've got uh, bacteria in your entire body. Sepsa, precisely. She has the baby has the beginnings of sepsa and such small baby it you just need few hours and such baby is just simply dead. She doesn't have the stamina to survive such attack. And if that baby would not give would not receive those antibiotics, it would die. And there was a study that did by psychology psychologists about this particular case. What was the difference between those two nurses? Both of them were certified nurses. Both of them had already some experience. Both of them, you should say, they, sh they both should manage to figure out that something is not correct. Why only do one of the nurses um, figure it out? And the first answer for what the nurse was that it was intuition. But after a little bit more talking and discussion, it turns out that the first baby has a, uh, the first nurse has in her head like mental model how healthy baby should look like. She had like picture or something like this in her head and if something is different then in her mental model there's like alarm, something is wrong. And this actually saved the baby because the first nurse looked at all the uh, parameters that was easy to get. And all the parameters were checked, checked, everything is fine. And the second nurse was not looking at it. She just looked at the baby as a whole and there was something incorrect. And she saved the baby. And this is like uh, an example, not from IT world. In IT world, a little bit similar example of mental models could be used of, so we call it cold smells. You, if we take the abstraction layer la triangle, on the very bottom we've, we had source code. And in source code, you could do everything. You can break any rule and it will work. And you're able to probably even write unit tests in such a way that they will pass. And everything will look correctly. Just simply this code will not be maintainable, will be difficult to add something to it. And if you look only from the layer of the source code, you will not find it. But if someone has some bigger knowledge or expertise or and looks from the higher level, for example, design patterns, it can easily say there's something incorrect. You shouldn't have all the 100 methods in one class. Maybe you should use this or this design patterns, design patterns. And why I'm mentioning mental models while talking about uh, uh, boosting knowledge sharing, because I think if you share the knowledge properly, it can help build such mental model 
build such mental model in your head about your product, about your solution. If you give it from the top to the bottom, people are able to reason that maybe something is wrong in this area because it doesn't fit to the higher level picture. And if you come back to the architecture, you could have the architecture, but no one says that architecture is really correct. Maybe there is also a problem with the architecture. If you don't have the higher levels, you will not be able to state it. It would be very difficult. Okay, let's move. Let's move. Okay, so why not just create such abstraction layer, uh, abstraction level tra layer triangle, and just use it? Uh, this is very. You could, but unfortunately, building uh, this triangle is not that easy. You would need to have like all the information about your solution. And first problem is what actually to put put on each layer of this triangle. If at the very top is easy, the lower you go, the more complex it gets, the more information you will have there. Perhaps after some layer, it even doesn't make sense to build it further because it would be just a waste of time. It would change anyway too often and so on. But even on the higher second tier, maybe fourth layer, you may have already doubts if elements should go to the third layer or should it stay on the fourth layer. The guidance, the guidance I've talked about some few slides uh, earlier, that each layer should be complete can probably help with this, but they can only help a little bit and you still need to somehow figure it out and it's not possible to give some general rule how to do it because each solution is product is so different that only you have the knowledge about your product. And the second thing is how, actu how many layers are actually should there be? Perhaps for some solution, five is enough and you will have the entire triangle. Perhaps for other solution, you will need to have 15. And this is also something that while building this triangle, you need to figure out and no one from outside is rather not able to tell it to you. And the problem of building the abstraction layer triangle can be also caused by the fact that you already, you already are at some state. You've got people in your company and probably a lot of people in your company has this kind of image of the entire product of the solution. Some part very, very clearly knows precisely what to do there. Some part they know that those parts are there, but more or less what they are doing, but they don't know precisely how they are done. And about other parts, they, for example, don't know at all. We are, the company I'm working with is not that big company if we compare it to Intel, Nokia, or Microsoft. And we already, starting perhaps hitting this kind of issues that there are places that no one was touching for a few years because there was no need and knowledge disappears. And if you've got people with such incomplete bike, it's very difficult for those people to ride on this bike. Just imagine riding a bike without a seat on a bumpy road. Good luck. Okay, so in summary to what I've said is that if you would like to share the knowledge quickly and have people working, the, the decrease the time to productivity, it's very important to organize the knowledge that you already have. I would encourage to build such abstraction layers triangle and provide the knowledge from the top to the bottom. Actually, the top layers of the abstraction layer triangle can be provided not only to engineers. If you've got their information about your product, how it works, how some high level components cooperate, this is something that actually everyone in the company can get know about. People that do not actually develop like scrum masters, managers, maybe accounting, whatever. This, those are information that everyone can handle. And the lower you go, the harder it gets. 
And one more thing, don't overwhelm, don't overwhelm. Do not provide too many information at once because you just simply can get lost. If you get too much at once, you shut your brain, shut your mind and think, I will get back to this later. It's maybe better to make like meeting, explain first two, three layers. That's enough, enough for now. Go do something, read, update uh, your source code bait, base, check how it works, talk with people, drink coffee, and next day take the next layer and talk about the next layer, put it on the knowledge that is already in, uh, in someone's head, on the knowledge that is from the higher level layers of abstractions. And with this, actually, this will be it. Just one more question. Anyone who is sleeping, raise your hand, please. Okay, I think I managed to hit the 20% mark. So thank you very much. Any questions? Do we have questions? Oh, yes, there are questions. Yeah, also, I do have a question, and I do have a microphone, so... <laughs> so you're first. Thanks. We can um, try. Yeah, I agree with this vision of abstraction layers. And uh, I wonder about this part where you said, where you tested this, uh, you had this trial run with uh, sharing yeah. the knowledge in this way. And uh, what's curious for me is that I understand that you considered it a failure in a way that uh, you noticed that you went too deep, yep. which was against your plan, of course. Uh, but do you think that that was actually wrong in general? Because uh, at the same time, you said that it was really a good uh, discussion, that you both uh, felt really good at sharing this knowledge. So uh, the question is, if it's really uh, kind of wrong to, to okay, uh, explain it in layers, but then go to details and go back to the other layer, maybe this is a way. Uh, I think yes. And the reason why I think so is because I remember when I joined the company, I had similar introduction talks. And I remember I was given all the details, all the juicy part, and we had discussion. And it was really very interesting. But after all those introductions talks finished, I went back to my desk, grabbed some stuff that needed to be done. And it turned out it was totally not in this area. And I was totally lost. I, and and I think that if I would get like first overall picture, then I w anyway, the do those details information, I will get it. Either I will go and ask or someone will finally uh, make a meeting with me and explain it to me. But at that moment, when I go back to the desk and wanted to start working, yeah, I was totally lost. I felt it was really s uh, strange. <laughs> yeah, so I would prefer to have like the overall image, I would say. Okay, thanks. Okay, so my question. Um, do you think that you uh, you always uh, are able to uh, develop this pyramid of the abstraction layers? Because I think that there's a couple of like things that if you go deeper, you found the exceptions which are contradict to the higher level. For example, like the the basic examples can be these orthographical rules in Pol in Polish, for example. That you have the rules, these like abstraction layers, but if you go deep, you will find the things that will be a contradict the up higher abstraction levels. So you said grammatical rules. Or? Uh, orthographical. So like diacritics in po in Polish, you have the rules, but you have the exceptions of the rules, and how to build the gra the like, these pyramids for this kind of scenarios. Okay, from one point, it's probably not possible to build it always. But from the other point, with this example you gave, on the higher level abstraction, I imagine you would have something like uh, follow rules. And on the lower level, where you have the implementation, you will have the actually the rules, and the rules contains also the exception. So it's still not contradictory, just at least in my head. But possibly there are situations where it's not that easy. I can imagine it. I mean, I know it's not that easy. I've tried in my company and only reached only until some point, and I was 
like I was not able to do it further just simply. At least not alone. Any other questions? If I, if I can. Yes. Um, I have a question, uh, I mean a uh, set of questions. So the first one, uh, with this approach, how did you uh, rise or rather lower the time to productivity? That's the first one. The second one is, mm, basically I tried to build such a knowledge structure also in my company, in the product that I'm working at. And actually it's quite uh, complicated financial stuff uh, they have many uh, many layers because it was designed to be a strategic platform for all the bank applications, blah, blah, blah. So I noticed that uh, my junior team members, uh, when they were going from one layer to lower, to lower, to lower, to lower, eventually they, they lost the connection between the layers. Did you find out such a situation? How did you deal with that? The third one is about testing if people are getting the knowledge, if they are understanding it, have you done, I don't know, any any test, any quiz, <laughs> anything like that? And what about hands-on expertise? I uh, sorry, uh, experience, any tutorials, any check-ons, something like that? Okay, a lot of questions. Uh, maybe one of them was if I've seen people losing the connection. I did not. Possibly because we didn't have so many layers as you had in your company. So that could be the reason. The second was how the time to, to productivity was increased. I don't have any measurements that says he was, he's, he was three weeks, here is two weeks. But after just talking with people, if this was useful, I can see previously people require much more time when they when they uh, started working and they get to a desk and get some task to do they needed someone all the time like sitting with them all the time seeking information and actually from the question you got it was visible that there's like basic basic knowledge just simply missing about the solution with this approach there's still no detailed information there's still help needed but those person are generally uh, possible to move in your entire solution and at least figure out which possible places the issue should be implemented or the problem occurs. And the next questions, I actually don't uh, remember, sorry. Sure, there, there was two more, but uh, yeah. it came into my mind, another one, <laughs> if I may. Okay, we've got uh, a little time. <laughs> Okay, so I was asking also about uh, checks. If you do any checks, if someone got understanding. Because uh, my personal example was that one team member was saying, okay, I understand, I understand. Yep. And when I actually gave him the task in the area that he theoretically said he understood, he didn't understand a thing. And he was having like a very high level understanding, but mm -hmm. when it got to doing some real task, he was totally lost. And if you do any, I don't know, quizzes, <laughs> some, some, you, you take a person and ask him, uh, okay, so now you explain it to me, or something like that? No, we don't do any tests or something like this. Maybe it would be good to have some kind of quizzes, but we don't have something like this, at least yet. Okay, so, and uh, the second question was about tutorials and hands-on uh, experience, if you combine it uh, into that, because, you know, learning by doing probably the, the best one. Uh, this is some, the, the stuff that I presented, uh, has an, the idea is to help someone to start. When that person is a little bit longer, you all the time can have like uh, workshop w pair programming or other use other techniques to extend the knowledge. This is the, the, the triangle of abstraction layers helps during the beginning the most. Not sure if that answers your question. Okay, so that's like very introductory thing. It's not the, the, the hands-on experience on any tutorials, you just mm, either not give it at all or just give the task uh. or give it after this introduction. Is that correct? 
I'm not sure if I get it correctly. Uh, you, you can. I don't think you can substitute hands-on experience. You need to do it. So this is something that 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 person will struggle at the very beginning, and I don't think you. I don't know a way to get rid of this element or something like this. But with with all the basic knowledge, the overall knowledge, I think it's just simply easier. Mm -hmm. And one more question. Uh, what about if there is a very big domain knowledge related to product? In my case, it's basically financial, inst uh, financial instruments. And, you know, yeah. people may learn that weeks or months and not get everything. And it is more or less, but still strictly related to the code. Uh, I give away the microphone. Uh, still, if you require some very specific domain knowledge, would you give some very important and crucial task to person that just joined your company? Mm -hmm. Probably there will be some other person that is working with that person. I don't know, some kind of programming use or something else. Uh, so the domain knowledge will probably come wi with time but still think that the general overview of the solution is useful at the start of the work in your company that's the answer i can give you sorry no other <laughs> okay so uh thanks for the talk uh question from from here uh, my question is simply how uh and and here how have you built your knowledge pyramid? And I'm asking for both sides. So collecting the knowledge for, from the people and um, question uh, is how you started and how you are maintaining this knowledge. Uh, have you built any new processes or updated any processes to maintain this pyramid? And then the, the second side of the question, uh, which tools have you used to do that? Any available tools or uh, tools that you have built on your own to do that? Thanks. Okay, so I was not trying to touch any processes. I didn't change any processes actually. Uh, how I've built it. The problem for me started actually when I started giving those introductory talks. So at that point I already had quite big knowledge that came from experience and few years already working with the solution. So from the top of the triangle, I was able to feel it by myself. Then just simply discuss discussions with people that uh, are in the company, work, work in other areas or just simply work longer than me, have more experience and trying to figure out what should be there. Uh, sorry? No, I don't use any, to be honest, particular for just uh, tool, just uh, pencil and some sheet of papers. Any more questions? Do we have a question in here? No. Okay, then, no, final call. Then, thank you very much. This was Bignev Pietzuch. Thank you very much.